Kung sa mga playoff teams may NBA Finals, para sa mga lottery teams may NBA Draft. Kapag nagko-compete ka for a title, you'll make decisions that will lead you closer to a title. On the other hand, kapag nagre-rebuild ka, you'll make decisions that will lead you closer to the number one pick. Basically, you're dedicating a whole year, a whole season for a draft pick. And that's why grabe na lang talaga ang expectations sa mga rookies, especially yung mga lottery picks. Sa point of view nating mga fans, to be fair, nag invest tayo ng oras sa mga paborito nating teams. Yung iba nagbabayad ng malaki para sa pangit na league pass service, yung iba gumigising ng alas 7 ng umaga para lang manood ng paborito nilang team. It's normal to have expectations, or to be excited, or to overrate someone. That's part of the fan experience. Now with the pressure from the team, the management, and the fans, lahat yun bibit-bitin mo as a 19-year-old rookie sa NBA. And hindi siya madali. You have to deal with a lot of shit. Pero paminsan-minsan may mga anomaly talaga. Just look at Paolo Banquero, ang number one pick sa 2022 NBA Draft. 19 years old, parang veterano maglaro. 6'10", pero yung skill set akala mo gwardiya. Rookie, pero yung production pang all-star. And as a Magic fan myself, kahit ako hindi makapaniwala. So ngayon, gusto kong tignan at gusto kong kilatisin kung paano at bakit si Paolo Banquero ang susunod na NBA superstar. I'm losing it, the noose if it's a moose of shit, a stupid myth, you choose to live, or choose to dip, you choose to fight, or lose your grip, and lose a gift, oh! Si Paolo Banquero ay isang 6'10 wing from Duke. Siya ang first overall pick ng Orlando Magic sa 2022 NBA Draft. Naging maganda ang simula ng rookie season niya sa NBA. Sa first 5 games niya, nag-average siya ng 24 points, 7.6 rebounds at 3.2 assists per game. Pre-draft night assessment sa kanya ng karamihan ay mostly about sa ceiling niya. Yes, his body is NBA ready, he can score from 3 levels, and his finishing is already decent. Pero ang laging question mark sa kanya pre-draft ay yung kung may igagaling pa ba siya 3 to 5 years from now. Kapag pinanood mo siya, first thing na mapapansin mo ay yung demeanor niya sa loob ng court. Hindi siya mukhang rookie. He takes things patiently and he reads the floor really well for a rookie. And with his patient approach to the game, mas na-utilize niya yung size advantage niya against his defenders. Sa unang limang laro ni Paolo, in terms of field goal attempt ratio, most of his shots came from 0 to 10 feet. Average distance ng attempts niya ay 11.6 feet. Which kung titignan natin on a film standpoint, it's a good thing. Kasi ang ibig sabihin nun, nakakapunta siya sa paint with his live dribble. According to NBA's advanced stats, 19.5% ng shot attempts ni Paolo, may 7 or more dribble siya. And sa possessions na yon, he scored at a high rate of 52.9%. And with that, instead of being rattled sa NBA debut niya, pag napanood mo siya, there's this confidence sa kanya na kita mo sa kanya na alam naman niya na kaya niyang pumunta sa paint and either mag-draw ng foul or umiscore. Here's Van Caro with the first shot of the season and the Magic rookie scores the first point to the year. Here's Van Caro with a power dunk. Pitches it ahead to Van Caro. Sa unang NBA game ni Paolo Banquero, nagtala siya ng 27 points, 9 rebounds, and 5 assists. With that stat line, siya ang naging unang rookie na nagtala ng 25-5-5 stat line sa kanilang unang laro sa NBA since LeBron James. Si Banquero na rin ang may hawak ng most points recorded by a Magic player sa kanilang unang NBA game. Well, I, I think that's a sign of the growth. Um, we've talked about it early on, his ability to just adjust as the game going on, seeing different things. Um, and he's done a great job of doing that to each game he's played in. You know, I think the one thing that he continues to do is just pick up as games go on. He's learning it, he's slowing it down, he's understanding it, knowing the pace of the game. He's doing a great job of communicating, but then it goes back to his, his ability and to trust his teammates and his teammates are trusting in him. You know, people hit me up after the games, obviously. Um, text me all these stats um, but this is just I mean not even to sound you know full of myself or anything but like this is just kind of what I expect out of myself you know playing at this level being able to score um, you know I just feel like I've been blessed by God with the body the skill the IQ so you know 
what I'm doing is just kind of what, what I expect to be doing. Ang Orlando Magic roster construction wise, if you're from the outside looking in and hindi ka gaano ka familiar, you might think na yung roster ng Orlando overloaded sa bigs and sa guards. But that's not the case. Yung roster ng Orlando, the way I see it, yung players nila are playmakers. Whether 6-2 or 7-2, if you watch them often, you'll just see five players making plays. Isa sa mga common fielded lineups ng Orlando Magic to start the season ay yung five-man combination na Franz Wagner, Terence Ross, Paolo Banquero, Bol Bol, and Wendell Carter Jr. Kung titignan mo yung team, there's three 6'10 guys, isang 7'2 and isang 6'7. So you would think na yung point guard ay si Terence Ross, right? Actually, hindi. You can argue na sa lineup na to may dalawang point guard. That's Franz Wagner and Paolo Banquero. Sa unang anim na laro ng Orlando Magic, si Paolo Banquero, 18.8% ng possessions niya on the floor are pick and roll ball handler plays. For Franz Wagner naman, 26.7%. The point here is that yung Orlando Magic team kasi, they're letting their players make plays and make decisions on the fly. Yung opensa nila is not the greatest, pero in my opinion, yun yung tamang offense para ma-develop yung skill set ng players nila. Basically, it's a modern NBA standard 5-out offense. Occasional double drag, zoom actions, and empty side actions. Pero hindi siya 5-out for the purpose to shoot trees. 5-out siya kasi they want to generate bigger gaps to attack and take advantage of. With Paolo being able to keep his dribble when going to the paint, importante na magkaroon siya ng space para maka-operate siya and ma-navigate yung defense. Dahil dito, naka-highlight yung skills ni Paolo with the ball. Sa play na to, wing-to-wing ball screen to force the switch. Paolo knew na si Donovan pwedeng sumundot sa bola. So gumamit ng size up si Paolo to shield the ball with his body for the basket. Dito horns out for a Paolo Wendell pick and roll. Next switch si Mitchell Robinson but weren't aggressive enough to stop the ball. Paolo used an in and out hesitation dribble to stun the defense and he went right through Robinson's body to shield the ball for the layup. Yun yung maganda kay Paolo eh, nakikita niya kung ano yung binibigay ng depensa sa kanya. He doesn't force things too often. It feels like parang ang bagal ng laro para sa kanya and dinadisect niya isa-isa. Another perfect example of his patience with the ball. Five out pick and roll, nakita niya na yung Pistons naka ice coverage. Which means finafunnel siya palayo sa ball screen. Paolo Luna si Cade Cunningham nasa corner waiting to pinch and si Stewart nasa ilalim waiting for the switch. He used a hang dribble to wait for Wendell to fade and drew Stewart outside. At saka dun lang siya umatake sa tamang panahon. Oh yeah, for sure, man. I mean, just out there, um, definitely feel it slowing down. Um, kind of, my eyes are starting to, vision starting to expand more um, when, I, when I'm a drive and stuff. I think early on in the preseason when I would drive, you know, I wasn't able to, you know, really see backside or, you know, skip passes or really make reads. So tonight, uh, just continuing to build on that. I still don't feel like I'm all the way there, you know, in terms of, Really, it's slowing down to where I'm at a elite, elite level, but I definitely can, you know, feel myself improving on it every game. And as much as we love hot takes and overreacting to performances, if you look at the things that make Paolo Banquero a good player right now, those are essential skills. Eh. He's 6'10. He knows how to use his body. Meron siyang handles. He knows how to take advantage of slower defenders. He can score from three levels. Kaya niyang pumunta sa kahit saan niyang gusto. And the list goes on and on. Yun yung mga bagay na kahit hindi backed by stats, hot streak or cold streak, you can never deny pure skill. We can argue all day about his projections and his ceiling, etc, etc, but yung mga skill na meron siya right now, for a rookie, bihira lang na meron ganun. For some players, inaabot ng years, yung iba, never. And yun yung biggest factor on why many people are so high on Banquero. Because he just knows how to play the game. And paano pa kaya once he gets his reps in? 2 to 3 years from now, anong player natin itignan natin? And yun yung sobrang interesting kay Paolo Banquero. 